Welcome to this Xcode series of tutorials. We're going to be delving deep into Xcode and getting to know all the major components to it. But if you're already familiar with Xcode, go ahead and skip this tutorial and go ahead and go right to the app building section of the course. So when we click on Xcode, we come to this splash screen and we see we have a few choices. We can open up a new playground right here. And a playground is a place to test out your code. We can go ahead and open up an existing project here, or we can create a new project. We're going to select this one and create a new project. Now on this screen, we have a selection of choices to choose from if we want to use any of the predefined templates that Apple gives us. If we highlight a template, we can read about it, what it does down here. This one provides a starting point for a master detail application. This is a page-based template. This is a single view. This is a tab-based application. It gives you a tab bar. And this is a game template. So this will come with some starter code to get a game up and running. We're going to be using the single view application for this demo. If we come over here, we see we have choices as well. We can choose which operating system we want to use Xcode with. We want either iOS or OS X. They also have the watch iOS. And then there's the framework and libraries. So if you're working with OS X, you'd come here and you'd choose a template from possibly this area. But we're working in iOS, so we're going to choose the single view application. Then we choose next. Now this screen that's asking for the name of our app, which is the product name, and we're just going to call it demo. The organization name is your name, or if you have an organization that you work with, you would list that name here if you want to. The organization identifier is sort of your email address in reverse or organization email in reverse. Apple uses the organization identifier and tacks on the name of the app to it, which it does down here. You can see the name of the app gets tacked on to it and it creates what's called this bundle identifier. And that's just a unique identifier to distinguish your app from any other app on the App Store. For the language, we can choose Swift. If it's not already selected, go ahead and select that. And for the device, you have three choices as well. We're going to choose the iPhone, but you can choose the iPad or Universal, which builds your app on either the iPhone or the iPad. We're going to leave Core Data unchecked. Core Data has to do with saving the data of your app into the Core Data Store. So if your iPhone is shut off, you'd always have access to that data when you turn the iPhone back on. We're going to use Core Data in a future tutorial. And we can leave Include Unit Test checked. Then we click Next. And I'm going to save this on the desktop. You can put it wherever you like. We're going to leave Source Control unchecked. That creates a Git repository. And that has to do with different versions of your app will be created and saved. So you can revert back to the previous version if you want to. And we'll click Create. And then we're taken to this general screen. And here's where we can select certain settings for our app, such as do we want the app to rotate upside down, landscape, portrait. You can select that here. We can select a deployment target. And on the top menu here, we have choices as well, right across. We can choose capabilities. And this gives us options to set up push notifications, iCloud, set up Apple Pay. If your app is going to use those features, you'd come in here and set those features under capabilities. For things like build settings, you can change the build settings here if you'd like. Code signing, this has to do with when we submit the app to the App Store, we'd come in here and we'd set some settings on this. Deployment is the target we can set. But something important to keep in mind is most of these settings you see here really won't have to dig too deep into to create great looking apps. And when you do need to use one of these features that we've come into here, like push notifications, and I show you how to do that in one of the apps in the course, then we'll come in here and toggle on the switches that we need and change settings accordingly. So if you're really new to Xcode, don't worry about any of these settings. You could just leave them as the default setting for capabilities for general, etc. And as you progress in Xcode experience, you'll learn which ones to change or tweak.